All right, fun stuff. Okay, so the basic idea behind node level tasks is let's say you've got a graph and you've got some of the nodes that you have labeled. So in this case, some of these nodes are labeled, uh, this node is green, this node is green, that node is red. And what you want to do is you want to label the other nodes. So that's a very common problem in, um, in a graph. So let's say you have a social network, you know, you're trying to uh, label people. Um, so <clears throat> what we're gonna talk about in this section is we're gonna talk about um, four different ways that you can do this. You can use the degree of a node, you can use centrality, you can use clustering coefficient, and then the last thing we're going to talk about in this section is graphlets. So starting out with the simplest thing, um, the node degree. So if you were doing something like uh, a network of Twitter and you were looking at people's followers, it's pretty straightforward. If you're looking for celebrity, one of the first things you might do is you just look at the people who have the most followers, right? Um, so that's going to be um, the you know the degree, the number of edges going into that node. In the case of Twitter, I guess you would say followers. It's probably a directed edge, so you'd look you'd be counting inward edges as opposed to outward edges. Um, but that's a pretty straightforward way to, to identify. And for something like Twitter, that would probably be good enough. You wouldn't need anything fancy to say, who are the celebrities? Um, <clears throat> in this case, however, one thing you're doing is you're treating all nodes equally. They all have equal weight. So it doesn't matter whether, you know, Ted Key is following you or, you know, um, the president of the United States is following you. You, you, you. you treat all of them as just, you know, one follower, right? So in something that's a little bit more complex, like let's say you're looking at scientists and you want to know who is the, the who are the most preeminent, you know, researchers in, in artificial intelligence. Well, maybe the guy who is the most active on social media and has the most followers isn't necessarily the most preeminent one, right? Maybe it matters like kind of how important their followers are. So we can progress a little bit in complexity from just simple node degree to saying that we wanna capture the importance of this neighborhood um, around the person. Um, and we're gonna take into account not just this, this basic simple count. Um, so it turns out there's lots of different ways you can do it. Um, we're just gonna talk about a handful here, eigenvector, centrality, betweenness, closeness, centrality. Um, but there are, um, um, there, there are many others you, 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 you can look it up, but I think this will give you a flavor for the kinds of things we can look at. So eigenvector centrality. This one's um, a little bit com more complex. It's, it, it didn't uh, come to me immediately, but basically the idea is you say a node is important if its neighboring nodes, the nodes that it has edges to, are also important. So it's the number as well as the importance of the neighboring nodes. But the problem is the importance of your neighboring nodes is defined the exact same way. So this is a recursive kind of a problem. You say, well, I'm important if my neighbors are important, but my neighbors are important if I and its neighbors are important. So how do you, how do you, you know, sort of solve this uh, recursive problem? Um, so what we can do is we can simply say, um, We'll take the sum of the importances. So we'll, we'll, we'll call this importance, this centrality number C. And I'm gonna sum up the importances of all my neighbors. And then just for grins, while, which will become apparent later, um, instead of doing the raw sum, I'm just going to multiply it by a constant. I'm gonna multiply it by one over lambda. And it's just gonna make the number a little bit smaller. So if this is a recursive problem, how do we solve it? Well, it turns out that this, this summation here, you can write into matrix form. So instead of calculating this one at a time for each vertex V, okay, you can line up all the vertices uh, in, a, in a matrix and you can use the adjacency matrix. So, so again, if there's N nodes, adjacency matrix, right? It's N by N and it has a one, any place where there's an edge between them and a zero if, if, if there isn't. So, um, what we're saying is that um, this equation, um, I'm not gonna 
like go into the all the different steps of the math. But this equation on the left with the summation, if that's true for every node, then basically if you vectorize that equation, um, what it ends up is this formula, uh, lambda times all, a vector of all of our centrality values C equals the adjacency matrix times the same vector C, okay? Um, and so that's the, the recursive relationship. Well, if you guys remember your linear algebra, that this is basically the form um, for uh, defining eigenvectors. And so what people do is they take the adjacency metric, matrix, they find all the eigenvectors, uh, find all the eigenvalues. And then for the largest eigenvalue, um, they go and they, um, uh, they, they use that one and they say, what is the eigenvector associated with the largest eigenvalue? And it turns out if you do that, then it will have these nice properties where every node will have um, a number assigned to it, a centrality number. And in fact, um, this relationship will hold where basically the centrality of a given node will be um, you know, proportional to the sum of all the centralities of its neighbors. So basically what we've done here, we used a little bit of linear algebra, but basically what we've done is we've gone from simply counting the degree of our neighbors to saying we're going to also include the importance of our neighbors. So the next uh, centrality measure we're gonna talk about, this one's a little bit easier to understand, is between this centrality, okay? And so this really measures whether or not in a network, a particular node is kind of off on the periphery or if it's kind of in the center of the action, okay? And it's defined by looking at the number of shortest paths between various points, um, various nodes that actually contain our node in question. So for this small network with five nodes, um, you can see on this slide that basically for node C, it appears on the shortest path between A and B. It appears on the shortest path between A and D. And it also appears on uh, the shortest path between A and E. So the count here, the centrality count is three. If you look at a node like A, whatever that's you know out on the, on the periphery of this network, it's between the centrality zero. It is not on the shortest path between anybody. So between a centrality kind of tells you if you're in the middle. And then it also has this other dynamic that um, if you have sort of a bottleneck. So if you imagine like um, you've got the, uh, a graph of Houston ML and all the people um, and their connections, you know, both inside and outside the meetup. And then you've got San Diego machine learning. And there's lots of connections between the people there and the people there, but there's really not that many connections. Um, connecting between the two groups, not yet. Hopefully soon it'll, it'll get a lot more dense. But so then you might say someone like Yan would have a very high between this centrality because she actually has edges that connect her both to a lot of the Houston people and to a lot of the San Diego people. So that's when you have a really, really high between this centrality because then basically all the shortest paths between Houston and San Diego have to go through this one person, let's say. Um, and so, so in certain kinds of, of uh, problems, you know, those are very interesting people because if you're trying to say expand your market, then somebody who's got this high between this centrality, they may just open you up to a whole new section of the graph, a whole new set of friends that they know and friends of their friends. Um, a third centrality measure we can look at is closeness centrality. It's, it's uh, related, but it doesn't really um, uh, uh, get this betweenness concept. It's just simply um, how many hops does it take you to get to all the other members in the graph? I'm not sure if this closeness centrality measure tends to break down for super large graphs. Intuitively, it seems to me it kind of would because now, you know, if you just said, what's my closeness centrality to everybody, you know, on Twitter, uh, you, you know, there's just so many people that you're like really far away from. So I don't know, but it seems to me that it might kind of devolve, uh, but it's, it's fairly straightforward. So again, here for the node A, you would say, um, 
you know, in order to get to B, it takes me two hops, C, one hop, D, two hops, E, three hops. That's a total of eight hops amongst them. And so uh, my centrality measure here is one eighth. And for D, it's one fifth, it's a bigger number. And so you would say D has higher closeness centrality. It's closer to all the other nodes than A is. And so again, this, this really tells you that A is more on the periphery. Okay, so those, those are the centrality measures. And now we're gonna take it sort of another step and um, centra we're, we're gonna take a look at the clustering coefficient. So in this particular algorithm, what we're looking at is not just nodes or not just paths, but rather I'm saying, hey, if I look at my neighbors, my direct neighbors, so in this case, the blue node V is the one we care about. Its neighbors are these red nodes. Are my neighbors connected to each other? Yes or no. In this case on the left, all four neighbors are directly connected to each other. And so this is maximal connectivity. And um, so if we take the edges between my different neighbors divided by the total possible number of edges, um, those two are equal. And so that, that's one. Here, we've got half as many connections to, between our neighbors as possible. We've got three out of six. And here we've got zero out of six. So clustering coefficient is a different concept than centrality, right? It, it, it's really sort of saying, um, I, I, don't, I don't even really know best how to say it, but sort of like, are you in a highly connected blob or are you kind of more like a hub and spoke, you know, kind of thing? So you can imagine, now, not only do we have these different measures, but you can combine them. There's, no, there's nothing that says you have to only use one of them. So you could use both uh, one or more centrality measures and the clustering coefficient, and that will tell you, are they in the center, are they periphery, and in their region, is it more dense or is it more you know, sparse, hub and spokey, you know, kind of like that. So we have one more concept that we're building up to here, which is graphlets. And the transition between um, this clustering coefficient and graphlets is that if you notice the idea that a neighbor is connected to another neighbor really means that it forms a triangle with you. So here you see the green triangles. So the two neighbors on the left, if they're connected, that means that there's a green triangle here with, with our, our main um, vertex V um, at one of the points. And so up top, here's another green triangle and on the right, here's another triangle. So the clustering coefficient is identical to, in, in saying how many edges out of how many possible edges, it's identical to saying how many triangles can you form with one vertex on, on the node V um, in the ego network. So the network that's the immediate neighbors and their connections. So if it turns out that this metric is how many triangles can you form, what if I ask about other structures other than just triangles? I could extend it to other shapes, right? And that's what Graphlets does. So, um, Let's see here. So, so basically, if we consider different shapes of, of size from two up to five nodes, we get 73 different possible shapes. And rather than picking the best one, what we can do is we can just use all of them. All right, so this next slide here shows you all 73 of them. Okay, um, so, you, so, so this first one here, two node graphlets, this is just basically saying that I have, an, I have a neighbor. So it's counting the edges. Um, for three nodes, the clustering coefficient we saw counts triangles, okay? But you could also count sort of these straight links going away from you. So essentially, um, if my node is on position one, we're simply saying how many uh, vertices are there that are two hops away from me? Um, but there's another way you can look at it where you can say uh, the by nerd vertex of interest is at position two, so I'm in the center of this. And so uh, for, for node A, it would not be able to say that it's in the center of anything because it only has one edge coming out of it. But 
Um, but this node U here definitely could say, because it, it's got BUE and BUC and so on. So you can do all these different shapes. And so up to five, there's, there's 73 of them. And, and so what you can simply say is where I sort of root these particular shapes um, on the, the vertex of interest, let me count how many of, of these, you know, two node things there are, how many of these, um, you know, number one, number two, number three, and so on and so forth. And you do this for all of them. You're going to get a, um, a pretty accurate representation of the, the, the structure around and not just always one hop away uh, from the node of interest. So here's a simple example. Uh, if you look here at this node U, it's got, um, where is it? Uh, so, so, so down here it, it shows. So for type A, you've got two of them. You can go uh, up one hop to, one hop up to the right and one hop down to the right. And that's it. For type B, which is a triangle, it's got one of them. For type C, which is where it's in the center of two, but there is no edge connecting those two. That's what makes this different from the triangle. There's none, because although it's connected to two other uh, vertices, um, they are connected. And then if you look uh, for type D, where you've got something that two hops away, there's, there's two of those. So for just uh, graphlets up to size three, you could represent this node U by the vector two comma one comma zero comma two. I have two A's, one B, zero C's, and two D's that are possible. And then you can do this for five. You can, you'd have a, a length 73 vector. Um, so just to, to, to kind of recap here, the, the, the node level features we've talked about, we started with a very simple concept, just counting the number of edges coming out of you, the number of neighboring nodes. And then we cranked it up to say, well, we want to kind of look at some importance. And we, we had a mix of things where eigenvector centrality is really kind of mostly about your direct neighbors. But then when you look at between this closeness centrality, it's starting to get into a little bit more global structure. OK. Um, and so, so this is looking at importance. When we talk about the topological structure, now you can look at these algorithms in a slightly different way where you can say, okay, uh, no degree is counting neighbors, clustering coefficients counting triangles, and we extend it to graphlets where we're counting all sorts of these different shapes, um, uh, not just triangles. And so you can combine these different importance and structural things to get a number of different values. And again, in the, in the traditional machine learning, um, um, I, I'm, I'm totally blanking on the, uh, on the word, but, but the, the way you would do it is you would then just go back to one of the algorithms we know. We would go to logistic regression. We would go to um, you know, support vector machine. And we would use those as columns, as features in our tabular problems. 